Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wired Unplugged, episode three. It's me, Jake Kulkowski, your host, joined by <clears throat> not only Aaron Cooper, but I've also got Leo Zulo, a friendly face from uh, episode zero, the, the, the very first episode, the prequel, and I came Heidelauf. That's my best attempt, Achim. I hope that works for you. Um, it's a bit Very of a special well. episode today because it's a bit of a conversational piece, really. We're, we're very fortunate to have guests join us on the show, but it's even better when a guest can sit through the whole thing. We've got a bit of a special today because Martha is Dead launched very <sighs> recently at the time of recording. Okay. And so we've got people to come and talk to us about it. And the good thing is I don't have to, you know... Um, sort of bend our life around the 30 minutes they're free we can just sit and have a good chat about it and it's even more exciting because if you're familiar with wired live which is wired's output in general you'll know that it's not only wired unplugged this very podcast that you're watching or listening to it's also a series of specific videos that focus in on the games that Wired are putting out. And one such series is Martha Uncovered, which is a deep dive into very granular aspects of game development. Lots of inspiration is discussed, you know, the thought process behind the games. And it's very, very good at focusing on very specific things about the game. However, we're here to talk everything Martha in this very special episode with some people who are very qualified to talk about it. No, no more so than him, really. So please... Okay, can you let the people know who you are and what it is that you do? Thank you, Jake. Yeah, my, my name is Achim. I'm the creative producer on Martha is Dead. Um, and I've been working on the game for like the... I've, I've been there basically from the beginning, but actively involved with producing it for two and a half, three years now. So a long journey. Um, I'm, I'm based in, uh, in Germany near Hamburg. Uh -huh. And mostly working remotely, of course, especially in the times we're in now. Well, that's a great thing to hear because we want to touch on all of these points from, you know, working in the pandemic to, well, the very, very beginning. So, um, Leo, Aaron, you guys have worked very, very closely on this project the whole time too. So I'm really looking forward to your, to your insight. And I think we should start where most stories start, unless you're Quentin Tarantino. At the beginning, um, so Martha is dead. Uh, is 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 LKA Studios? Um, I don't. Can I call it a spiritual successor? It certainly seems like it's linked in a way to 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 2016's Town of Light. But what, why don't why don't you tell us a little bit about this? Um, I'd like to mention. I mean, obviously today we're missing Luca, who who sadly is sick, and and he mm. the creator director owner of LKA, and it would have been. A real pleasure to have him here. So we're just going to send our regards. And if people are watching this in God knows how many months and years, obviously he was sick and he's not dead. He's going to be okay, but he, he would have been here otherwise. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, I, I met Luca. I'm going to just give a tiny preamble to the story because there's yeah. always a preamble to the story. Um, I, I, I met Luca, um, a grumpy looking Luca, at a table, a round table in Paris at a game connection in 2014 i think it was or 2015 and he showed me this video um and it was a first person walkthrough of a, of a, a really dirty decrepit hospital in in, in italy he told me with later it became it was transpired it was the hospital in volterra and he told me about the project and, and there was charlotte the doll in the wheelchair and all this sort of stuff and um, we were talking, he was pitching, he was pitching to look for a publisher and, and we met and we talked and, and it connected with me because this hospital, had it been open sort of many years later, you know, because it was a psychiatric hospital very close to where my family is from in Italy, my cousin actually would have been placed there. So there was a massive connection. It was just connected on so many levels. And um, I really wanted to work on this game. And um, a typical stubborn Italian, if you ever meet typical Italian people that are really stubborn um you tell them how you really want to work with them and they say Meep. you i'm going to do it myself so that's pretty much what happened so i kind of went hey Luca, man i really want to work with your game and um yeah that was it never heard from him again and then fast forward two years <laughs> by complete chance I, I saw they had launched um on pc and, and i got in touch with him he's like hey man you know come on this game you know and um 
thankfully we, we started talking and um he let us he, he worked we we kind of met and um hit it off and literally um our deal was signed with a handshake and that was the beginning of a very amazing and um loyal and creatively inspiring journey that has extended since 2016 so um yeah it's been brilliant and luca is an amazing person creative genius and obviously Channel Light was the first game, which well, we can talk about if you wish, but um, just led on to, to Martha. So, yeah, th there was a tiny preamble to the actual meat of the story before we get to Martha. But, yeah, it was um, yeah, intuitive. Yeah, I, I was actually wondering about the, the specifics of the meat. So that was actually quite dramatic. There was a bit of rejection, a bit of acceptance, a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was... It, was, um... it, started off well. it started off typically Italian. You know, it, was, it started off yeah. the moodiness, the standoff. The love, the respect. Yeah. It's and still like that, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. it's the mix of it all, right? So, so there is there, there is there is one interesting thing in that, and I, I, want, I was going to talk about this later, but I thought you know, since you mentioned the path to Martha, but the town of light wasn't just the path to Martha, right? Because working on the town of light also spawned the genesis for safe in our world. Oh man, yeah, such a such a such a twelve month period, and 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 yeah, wow, okay, Oof, very topical at the moment, yeah. Um, so two thousand seventeen, um, January, um, yeah, I mean, wow, we've got to go with this. Um, something quite catastrophic happened in my personal life. It was a bit of a bad year. It was I call it my annus horribilis, because um, the Queen had hers, and 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 I'm not the Queen, but I had my own version, and it was a pretty bad year, and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we we just started working with Luca. Um, we hadn't been, I hadn't been to the hospital yet because he, I then, in April, I'm just going to run around in dates, but in April of that year, I actually went to the hospital, took those videos, met up with him and just, just got immersed in the project. But rewind a little bit, um, in January, January the 6th, um, someone very close to me tried to kill themselves and I had to kind of lift them up and take them to the hospital and do, 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 and all that sort of shit. And, um, but they survived, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, <laughs> this is a really light-hearted, chirpy conversation. Sorry, lads. Um, and sorry, viewers or listeners or whatever. Um, and then, um, also in this time, a friend of mine um, uh, had lost his kind of lost lost his mind a little bit and was living on the streets, had a mental breakdown, had to go looking for him, found him, housed him. He ran away, got arrested, went into, uh, he got sectioned and kind of thankfully, um, now he's better, but that was a bit of a, an episode. Um, I'm not going to pinpoint who, but someone else within a core group, their uncle, um, you know, sadly, um, sort of, you know, um, passed by suicide. And in October that year, um, my uncle um, killed himself through um, suicide as well. So it was a, it was a really shit year. And yeah. um, in amongst all this, we, we, we worked on and launched... Um, Tano Light, which was obviously heavily, heavily, heavily involved with mental health. And Luke had spent 12 months researching um, mental health and sort of talking to patients and doctors and visiting the place and reading medical notes and actual real um, people's um, medical history that were like just you're going to walking around and there's just people's notes on the floor and you just pick them up and read them and it's just, it's just ri ridiculous mm -hmm. and we did a press tour there and then we ended up speaking to old psychiatrists that were there and and we actually bumped into an old patient who was literally um and this is 30 years after it shut um was literally just wandering around the the outside of the perimeter of the, of the building you know just you know, hello 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 and all this sort of stuff and he thought we were doctors and then he'd come up to us and say hello doctor you know good day today yeah great day today you know and so this 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 all happened in a in a year, and it, it was a really deeply impactful year. Um, and at the beginning of it, um, we said, "Oh shit, man, we've got to do something to to, to towards mental health. Um, it's such an important thing, obviously." Mm -hmm. um, so we, as a company, decided to give some money away, but then that wasn't really enough. So um, came up with wanting to set up a charity, and um, really the, the the seed and the real soul of safe in our world was born in that year during this whole set of episodes this, this big episode so town of light was a major major part major brick in that in that building of um the, you know, safe in our world well it's really interesting to get a you know an opportunity to talk about that then because town of light is 
some years ago now and Martha in, in a way will be you know the game that people are here are here to hear about um safe in our world you know coincidentally the last episode of the wide unplugged podcast we spoke to chariot officer rosie taylor there so if anyone's interested in finding out more you can just go back an episode and um have a listen so i actually played tanner light um back in the day and, and so when, when i found out that the same studio were making a game and it actually took a lot of similarities in terms of the location and the era i was actually very very excited and the question that i wanted to know back then is okay well i wonder what they're like what lessons they're going to take from tanner light and put into effect for martha so th that's a question i was curious to ask this is a this podcast by the way is so much of me just asking questions i want to hear do. which is very selfish I, but i'm a big fan I, <laughs> so. do, I do want to expand on that question as well because uh it'd be good to to hear an answer to what jay cast but also you know it's important to remember that lk hey have a background beyond games even before town of light as well and what they took from the industry and profession they were in into the town of light and then what came through there as well into martha is dead in terms of scene and setting and it'd be good to know a bit more about their past for people that don't know as well okay well i mean luca luca um worked in the theater and film industry for 20 years um building sets creating worlds visual world, worlds um ranging from sort of set traditional sets you or and also using technology to light things up and cast images and, and create beautiful atmospheres so he really has that kind of artistic vision and can set a tone very well so he is very much a he's, a, he's an amazing writer um and visionary and everything else but he's also very much a creative if he was in the film industry, he'd be a very good film director, you know. So obviously, he's, he's used this this skill to transport it into um, into the games world, and and really the, tran the 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 journey from from games from from this kind of set scene building to 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 games was was a little bit sort of raw. I mean, he didn't really there wasn't really a programmer, but he got got a Unity license, started working in Unity and building it from Unity and building it within. And it was learning on the job and building the team on the jobs. But the, 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 the essence and the soul and the vision and the DNA of the game was always set pretty early. And it comes from Luca, really. Um, he's 100% the, you know, everything about, you know, Tanner Light and Martha, you know, is basically, you, you feel it. It has a certain DNA that you can actually taste almost. Um, and that's, that's basically him, you know, it's, it's come from him and obviously his team who've done an amazing job. Um, but yeah, in terms of, I mean, I, th I think the, the first most obvious thing between the two is that it went from Unity, which was <laughs> was great at the time. Without, I mean, Unity did a very, very fantastic job at being able for people to get started quickly. And then the massive upgrade from Unity to, to Unreal and starting, I mean, this is four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And Luke was already working on 8K graphics and photogrammetry and all these wonderful techniques. I mean, way before they'd even set out specs for next gen. So you, there was already a massive jump, a massive leap, especially from a, a, a really young team, you know, who've only, their only experience with Unity, and then they went, oh, I can do this, you know what I mean? And, and jumped <laughs> into, into Unreal. So it was, it was I mean, the, the first thing is basically the, the technological, sorry, the technological leap. And then obviously, you know, from a support and, creative producing support and, and and also from a development support there was way more resources but um you know akin for sure can help because um answer this because he was involved from from almost day one on the creative side yeah i mean you 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 said so many good and important things already leo but um i i have to agree i mean for for me it's um the big question was if if we can move like the the, the feeling and the atmosphere that town of light had in a in a very more condensed space and in a in a very linear way that it told the story. If we can move this to something much bigger that Martha now is, so um, I, I think um, the, the the story is more complex. You have more characters involved, and uh, very obvious is of course the the world that it's set in. So um, you you have all these different places you can travel to. And you are not just restricted to one place, uh, even if it was really interesting to explore and exciting. But in Martha, you have like several of these places. And um, 
that's uh, the the same for gameplay itself where um town of light was let's say more a story that's told and you know um not, not so much like actual gameplay in it and this was a big task for uh, within the team that they challenged themselves to make it more of a game and make it more you know put more uh, variations in what you are doing which is taking the photos or you know all the things we have in the game so um it's it's been a big step i think on on this as well leo you mentioned four and a half years the technology that luke and Elke were using with photogrammetry and stuff and if you cast your mind back before lockdown the last games come we were at and we had martha and we were showing it behind closed doors and it was before next gen was next gen mm -hmm. um and we were essentially showing people our idea or lks idea of what they could do with the technology that hadn't even been pushed in front of people's faces yet and i don't know if you remember the look on people's faces and how long journalists and partners they would just they would just walk up to the fireplace in in the living room in the house and just stare at the brickwork for so long and just like huh like that that was quite a cool moment right for, for an indie studio for, for yeah. a small yeah. studio to they push the boundaries man i mean you know the the, the techniques the the vision the the I mean, and, and also what, what was done then for, I guess that was 2019, you know, the, every every so often or quite regularly, I guess, it, every single graphic and, and texture was upgraded and upgraded and upgraded even to the mm. end. So there was mm. no there was no sort of, yeah, I'm happy with that. I was yeah. happy with that, now yeah. I'm happy with this, you know. So there was just a constant iteration. You know, the graphics team there, the art team, you know, they just, they're just machines, man. They're just creative machines you can just want to just and perfectionists um and that combination with luca driving um yeah. is, it's really strong yeah it it often happened that they just you know enhance stuff that we really didn't you know we we didn't even know about and we certainly didn't wait for it or something because i never thought it was necessary but then <laughs> you know you just had had another step of of whatever it is some veget vegetation or or uh, just a just a tiny object in the house and uh, Aaron I'm still I'm I'm one I'm not a journalist but I'm one of the guys who are still looking at the brick wall yeah, sometimes yeah. <laughs> yeah. and I'm I'm really not kidding um it's um especially when you uh, when you look at stuff for screenshots or when you move the camera around to do something for trailers or you know you can really get lost in that place. You can just, you know, uh, spend spend an hour in a room and just move around with a, you know, free camera, which yeah. makes it a bit, you know, you can see even more detail than sometimes you can see in the game itself. And it's just, uh, it's it's really spectacular. And I, I think uh, the the style is, um, it, it, I, I wouldn't know how to describe it, but for me, it has a very special style, a unique style to it that I really like. It's extremely realistic, but then it's also not. And it just, you know, I, I would want to be there um, and There's, spend some time. Uh, the other day, I, I think it was two, three days ago, there was, a, there was a tweet that was posted to Wired and someone had taken an in-game photo of the cow. And I was just mm -hmm. scrolling by and it's like, oh, someone's in a, in a field with a cow or something. And then yeah. I saw it was from Martha is Dead. And I'm like, Phew. In, in large the image, image on my phone. And I was like, that yeah. actually is a really good looking cow. And just the amount, the amount of hours, effort, tears spent on making one cow. Look uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, I think she doesn't look always that good, though. But anyway, no, let's, no, not, no, no. Uh, let's not spoil it too much. The, 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 the loop on the cow. I mean, the cow wasn't originally in the game. You know, it was it was some. I, I, I think I, I think someone come up with the idea. Let's put a cow in the game. Let's put some. We need some animals, man. Mm -hmm. Kind yeah. of this wonderful farm. In Tuscany, I mean, I'm not, I think I've just been in Italy and I've been surrounded by. You were definitely yeah. driving the idea, man. I, well, I, I just come back from Italy. <laughs> and I, I was because our house is kind of 45 minutes away from his house, where, the, where this is based on. Yeah. And I'm surrounded by chickens and and yeah, yeah, yeah. and cows and sheep, and I'm like, man, we've got to have some. We've got we can't have a Tuscan villa. I remember. 
I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's open a zoo there. <laughs> and it's open. The, be- the beautiful thing is, yeah, the, 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 this is this is the fluidity of um and the and the nice way that you know sometimes development can work, and also when you're amongst a good group of people, come up with an idea and oh, yeah, okay, that's, that's not bad. And and even though you're not part of development, really, I'm not part of development, but the, the kind of what you know, mm-hmm. the, the guys took it on and. Um, before you know, you've got cows in the Twitter feed. So we just great. Yeah, yeah. just love the exactly. idea of you barging into the beating room, being like, "What we really need? Yeah. Cows." Actually, well, yeah. everyone's yeah. like, "Leo yeah. is high." I don't. Yeah. Know. <laughs> the last time, like exactly uh, what? What? Uh, oh, sorry, man. I was just going to say the last the last time Leo got involved in a conversation on Wired Unplugged, he also spent some time talking about cows, specifically how to use every yeah, part of one. You're going to kill a cow. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. I've got a sac- cows have got a sacred spot in my world. <laughs> it's yeah. it's it's. I always found that like, um, with uh, games that are taking you into um, uneasy situations or places. There's a sort of natural uh, way that the games funnel you about, in, in, and and there's there's tension there. And because of the way that um, I'll just say horror for now. Let's talk broadly. Horror is often as a, a very very passion driven project um you know when you see like indie movies a lot of the the really creative ideas that did things on a shoestring budget horror like the blair witch project or something like that and with games you're always seeing it, that things like that are always driven but with martha it's a difficult one for me because um there's clearly horror there but when i look at what the inspirations are to me sometimes you can look at a horror game and say oh that's trying to be sore meets you know, hostile or something like that. But for this, I think really the main inspiration is is absolutely 100% Italy. And although the game is, in a way, you know, discussing a lot of deep themes in a very dark period of time, it seems to be a bit of a love letter to Italy still, with the sort of unapologetic Italian voice acting throughout and the authenticity of the era and and the music and things like that. And so I found that like the game's constantly balancing between themes, but one of the, the crucial things here is how much it gets to showcase the beauty of Italy, this cow and this countryside, um, alongside the horrors of war and grief and loss and things like that. So Italy really has become in a way, one of the main characters of the game, if you know what I mean. Um, and, I suppose that's all down to the fact that you've got the uh, quote unquote stubborn Italians at the helm. But, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really glad about that. But w- one thing I would li- like to talk about, and it's something that um, is a little bit, it's, it's a bit obvious. A lot of people, you know, who are doing interesting takes on something dark or dare I say horror, they, they, they don't really talk about that. But did you ever get, you know, from, from Luca or maybe within a team, were there ever any conversations about, about horror media in, 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 in general or anything like that? I, I, I don't imagine this is a type of game where when it was being made, the conversations were, this needs to be the scariest shit anyone has ever played. Cause it doesn't run that way. It doesn't seem that crass, but what, what what was the the sort of the conversations around horror uh, internally? Uh, I mean, let me just state. I mean, it's not really a traditional horror game. I mean, it's it's right. a psychological horror game. The pacing is slow. It's eerie. Mm. It does take. You mentioned about the DNA. The DNA of Town of Light was that you you played it. It was four hours. I mean, you can play it in four hours. It's it's kind of linear. Um, and you had a grimace almost all the way through it. And at the end of it, you put it down, you go, that was brilliant. I'm really glad I played it. and I never want to play it again. Um, but the experience was with you and it had a certain DNA. And that DNA and the eeriness and the timing mm. and the, just the atmosphere was 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 a kind of a mini psychological horror. Um, and it was the precursor to Martha. Mm. Martha is everything Town of Life had but on steroids. So again, it's it's a slow paced game. It, it mixes um, beautiful, beautiful, stunning um, vistas and countryside and places and people with with this dark undercurrent, whether it's the fantasy side, the war side, or the um, or just the the, the, you know, the the mental health side and the horrors around it. 
Um, so it's, it's a real mix, but the, the, the same DNA applies. Um, it, I, I just, I, on one side, there's only one other thing I'm qualified to talk about, is when, when, when conversations with Luca intermittently happened throughout, so I'd pop in to see the studio and whatever, and, and he'd, show, um, he'd show me something. Um, and it's always in context. All the horrors are in context. But he'd show mm-hmm. me the, the face cutting, and I'm like, oh, fucking hell, Luca, man, that's, that's a bit strong, but I get it. You know what I mean? Go for it. You know, I mean, just, mm-hmm. you know, push the boundaries a little bit because he had a vision. And um, the thing about small teams is that sometimes you have to push boundaries. And, and by pushing boundaries, you get conversation happening. And, and, and it's, it's well spoken about that there are some parts that were quite graphic. But mm-hmm. if you play the game, they are all in context, but they are an extreme visualization of what the story is trying to tell you. So um, mm-hmm. I, think, I think the only thing we would say, I would say, is that, you know, there was an atmosphere, a creative atmosphere of, of being free to be able to do this. We weren't the sort of publisher or partner to say, you know, you, 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 we can't do this because it's going to annoy so-and-so. Or we, you know, there was no culling or clipping of wings. It was, Luca, it's your vision, man. Just do it. You know, push, go, you know, and we'll support you. And as a team, we supported and, and they were just allowed, I hope you feel the same. I think he still feels, he feels this. Um, you know, they were allowed to just create, you know, their boundless kind of vision in, in a game. So that's the only thing that we kind of contribute. And I think, I don't know, Akim, is there anything from the game point of view? Yeah, I want to I wanna quote uh, Luca for a second because it just fits perfectly. Um, of course, we had a talk today uh, now that he is unfortunately sick, but um, he was very sad that he couldn't join now. Um, we definitely have a second round, I'm sure. But what he wrote is uh, that he... He really loved uh, and appreciated the respect Wyatt had with his artistic vision. Uh, That's a direct quote from like an hour ago. And um, that uh, from his point of view, I'm I'm reading now, Mm -hmm. please mention Achim. (laughs) Also that from my point of view, we are not just working together, but we are sharing something deeper a vision of how games as a media is able to tackle social and cultural matters. And I mean, that's, that's Luca in a, in a nutshell working with him. I I think Um, it's just uh, that he's, he's uh, yeah. I mean, talking about horror and all this, it it never, I I think it was never meant to be any kind of horror or thriller or any Mm. game. It was a story that, Luca just wanted to tell and you know we were very excited about hearing and then everything just came together perfectly and and now in the end it's I don't know for for me it's in a nutshell it's more like a disturbing kind of um, but but also a very positive journey that you're on it's very very different to yeah I, I think other games or even some movies it's... I mean, we spoke we spoke on on the last episode, Jake, uh, when we were talking about you know moments that connect with Martha is dead and how you know th- there are the big moments, visual moments in the game that people mm-hmm. are talking about, but there was there are so many little things that people can perceive and have their own connections with, um, and I, I think. I, I remember, if I cast my mind back, the first time I went into the office and Leo said, okay, I'm working on something, look, look, look at this. And I saw a scene or two without any gameplay context. I remember turning to him being like, ah. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, okay, I don't know what I have just seen. It's made me feel a way. I don't know how that would be perceived, how it is messaged. You know, you, your mind just mm-hmm. starts running a million miles a minute of all these things. Mm-hmm. And then not too long after, I think this was about three years ago, three and a half years ago, um, LK, Luca came in and they sat down for a couple of days just to go through the early stages of, of, of the game and yeah. 
Akim, you were there. Um, yeah, of course you were. I, I won't I won't forget that day, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With but, 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 like but 10 people at the table. Yeah, yeah. All, all around, like, okay, this is going to be interesting. And but... 10 minus, minus Luca, perhaps. So nine yeah. of these people were just in utter kind of, um, yeah, whatever feeling it was, yeah. everybody was in. But the, the, the thing about those few days, though, is Lucas set the context and he said, this is the story I am weaving and what I am trying to say. And from that point, it was like, oh, OK, mm -hmm. um, I, I understand now. OK, and hopefully people will understand this as it progresses as well. But we, going back to what we were talking about last week as well, we spoke about, you know, the, the themes and what Martha is Dead is portraying throughout the game. It's not something that everyone can relate to because not everyone feels that way. And we spoke about uh, Fractured Minds when Safe in Our World launched and, you know, how Emily made a game to reflect, mm. you know, to try and make a visual representation of how her mind might work on a daily basis. And we were saying that, this isn't something that you see represented a lot in media. Um, no. And, you know, we, we had a conversation as well about the film, uh, The Joker, mm -hmm. um, which I, I think you've all seen. And, you know, you, you go through that film, you know, feeling sorry for this guy because you're being told a version of the story from a different part of his mind. And then at one point the rug is pulled and you're like, oh, okay. But, but then you have the questions of, is that the version that he witnessed? Is that a lie he has told? Is what I'm witnessing now at the end, the descent into madness? Or not? And it's one of those films that <laughs> it tries to represent a state of mind in a really interesting way. And I think it's a, it's a, that in itself is a big challenge. And I think that's something that is wonderfully tackled and portrayed in, in, in Martha. And these are the greatest conversations, I think, after a movie or, you know, wh whatever you just did, if you watched a series or something. Yeah. Like, exactly what you said, Joker is a good example. You can yeah. talk for hours and, and there's nobody really, I think, having the right opinion. It's mm. always like everybody's opinion is the correct one. Yeah. And it's just interesting to see how every everyone... Um, takes the same story and the same pictures in and interprets them in a, in a different way. Sorry for my, my English there, but, um, that was a and big I, fancy word, Akim, and you, you, you smashed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. Danke schön. No, it's, it, 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 it's, it's a fair point. And, and this is the thing I think that, um, I'm actually a big fan of horror. Like, in fact, so much so that what I often consider horror, a lot of people say, oh, I wouldn't say so. But um, yeah, a lot of the horror that I enjoy is very similar to, to Martha in the sense that um, it, I think a lot of people almost shy away from the word because it almost degrades the message because people seem to uh, associate horror with trashiness when in fact often is the case, you know, some of the very first bits of media in general, the first theatre ever made, the, some of the first books ever written, first fiction was horror. And I, I, I always find that the reason I asked that question wasn't to trap you all, but it's very interesting because it's actually quite interesting how often stories go down this route where for one reason or another, uh, if you're telling a story about maybe a horrific or tragic situation, the conversation um, can stay where it is, but, but sometimes horrific acts pop up and it's not ever for shock and stuff like that. A lot of the time framing is very important and it it actually helps to frame what I would call the mundane in a way, little things like a cow or, um, it's a big cow, so Jake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, average cow size things like a cow or, uh, or, or, or just, or just a Vista is, is much more mm. appreciated when that's been juxtaposed with some potentially difficult things. So the, the game matches, um, itself equally on, on very, touching and sentimental moments and some moments that are perhaps a little bit more jarring. And those moments in particular uh, are the moments that a lot of people in, in any me any extreme medium like horror or like dark thrillers can often grab the headlines. It's a little bit easier for a journalist to write about a specific moment than perhaps the entire context of why this little bit matters because, you know, um, 
it's just a lot easier for them, isn't it? So ab- uh, about uh, about Jake, that, you, you, you did mention something interesting there about like the the juxtaposition, or but e- even just um, in terms of the the world and the visuals as well is you know there is that moment where you step outside the house, you have your camera, and you're going to take a nice photo of this bird, which looks incredible. It's an incredible bird, but <laughs> you know you look around the landscape, the sun is shining, it's beautiful. There's green grass, there's animals all around, but even that in itself is, you know, so much love and attention has been put into that visual, but the visual serves a purpose as well. And that the world is beautiful, beautiful, but darkness happens within. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. But that's, I suppose that's more the, the thing I was trying to say. I just wanted to try to not sound like I was going in for uh, an Oscar, but yeah, without that very obvious <laughs> darkness, those, <laughs> those, those little bits of light are, are are easier to see you know to cast the shadow yeah. means that the, the thing in the foreground so 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 the game's as much about those moments as it is about the darkness and i think that for anyone who's not quite familiar with martha and there, there may be some people who are listening to this off the back of reading some of the the more um you know full frontal uh, aspects of the game that have made it into circulation so why don't we talk a little bit about that then uh leo just went straight in jumped in with two feet and said face ripping a minute ago so nice one leo um, but um but uh yeah okay so the game obviously is is it, it's a dark first person psychological thriller dark being the key word here there are some moments you, you can't really tell a story about heavy topics about sometimes being a little heavy so um as such uh there was um some news which led to uh, a statement from from Wired about that. Why, why, why don't we just talk about that a little bit? And uh, you know, it might be good to hear from you about this, Leo. To be honest. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it, it's um, well, what, what perspective? The the about five or six weeks before launch, um, we, we, we're rolling into um, submissions, and we are we are pulled aside, so to speak, metaphorically. By um by by Sony to say some of our content is a bit too strong, um and that kind of caused a problem really. You know, six weeks away from launch, we're we're gearing up for launch. We we've got the machine, the full the full locomotive is steaming towards the station, and and all of a sudden is 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 starting to get derailed. Um now the the I mean it's it's, it's such a big topic. Um. You know, they, they, there was some discussions over some content, content, and the graphic nature of some content. Um, now, the, the the argument on our side has always been this: we're never, even four and a half years ago, even even at Gamescom, actually in 2019, we had the face ripping scene on on camera. You yeah. know, it was it was part of the very first demo that we showed everybody. And okay, everyone said, "Wow, that's that's cool. That's a bit strong." But again, when when you describe the story and everything else, and and, and everything's in context. So, um, and even our first trailer, we put the face cutting scene. So, we're not we weren't ever trying to shock that this game has never been about. Here's some mm. really scary moments, but we're going to use them right at the end just to go bush and get people talking. And it was never about that. Um, we said from the very first, from the get go. This is an adult-only game. This is a, has strong adult themes. It's not for everyone. It's an 18-rated game. We've been rated by every rating body, and it passed through. In fact, Germany gave us a 16, you know, because obviously, you know, face ripping is normal in, in Germany. You know, but, um, <laughs> it became normal over the past 25 years or so. Right? Well, I'm, th- I'm thankful for it. because I'm still not over the fact that we got a 16 in Germany. <laughs> go out on a Saturday yeah. night for a pork knuckle and a face rip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, I, I grew up, I mean, I'm not that old, right? And in yeah. Germany, I, I grew up with like... Uh, Horror movies, like I, I don't know, even even not a horror movie. Talk about Peter Jackson's Bad Taste or something. Yeah. Purely a comedy with a lot of gore in it, but yeah. gore made for ten dollars or something. Mm. And the 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 movie was uh, just it, it was cut down by like twenty five minutes or something. I think it went sixty five minutes in Germany, and then yeah. it was even banned or something. So uh, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, sorry, I had to. Just... <laughs> no, no. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, uh, you're well versed in it now. So face cutting is oh, it's face cutting. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's no, it's a, it's a 16. Yeah, give me more. Um, so uh, yeah, so my phone just started talking to me. Um, yeah, so the, 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 we we um, we got rated properly, and um, we've been telling everybody about the content, and everyone knew about the content, and and also in because it's the Martha is a sensitive. The, the subject matter is sensitive. I mean, we're talking about, you know, sort of mental illnesses, and we didn't really want to focus on that because we didn't. We wanted people to discover the story, and the way we prepared, we spent a, a, a load of time strategizing to make sure that the game was presented carefully in a nice way to the right yeah. people, with the with the with the build up of the narrative to make sure people understood what the game was about, and then this this this. I don't want to use the, the the censorship word. I've probably just done, but they, they you know it just kind of came along and kind of derailed us, and we we had to take bits out. We had to make a statement because um, you know people were going to get different. You know, people on Sony were going to get a slightly different version to that on 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 Xbox and PC, and and it caused this whole sort of really carefully four and a half years of careful work. Was derailed, and this 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 PR juggernaut of, of mainstream news came sweeping through, and then yeah. sadly, I mean, whilst it's you know everyone says all oh, PR is good PR, um, to an extent it's true, but um, it also it, it, people who then started YouTubing or writing about the game just focused on the negative, on not the negative bits, on the on the gory bits and all the gory bad. stuff, and, yeah, yeah, and and really, you know. You, you, the face cutting, we've just laughed about face cutting. That sounds terrible, cutting someone's face off. You know, you cut your sister's yeah. face off with a with a with a pendant and then and then you're putting it on. I mean if you say that in isolation, you just wake up in the morning, hey, hello, you know, I just cut off someone's face hey. and I stuck it on. That's gonna sound a bit strange. But in context of the story, you know, it's really deeply symbolic and you you, you needed okay, you know, you needed and you needed to want to do this to feel the, what what you know Judy was feeling so it was really really important part of the game yes nothing in this game that was violent or extra violent or whatever you want to call it was was weird and out out of context and so to have some at the death at, not a bad word at the at the eleventh hour to come along um, and and kind of derail us it was a little bit awkward and um, you know we had to deal with the aftermath of of literally. I mean, Aaron knows there are thousands and thousands of press requests, YouTuber requests, which is all kind of nice, but they were all just focused, a lot of them were focusing on the sensationalist. Rather I think than the, the most scary stuff from, from our side, especially on the development side, was um, that we, for a certain time, we didn't really know what else might be coming. Mm. I mean, mm. now we are talking about the face cutting mostly, but... And that's good because I don't want to get into the others really because it's also spoilers and all mm -hmm. that. Um, but there's there's more, and it uh, in in the in the conversations we had uh, at least initially, it wasn't really clear how much bigger this list might grow because, of course, there's quite a lot of content uh, in the game that you can see as. Yeah, some, something, I don't know, you, you, you'd have to censor or something that's just too offensive or whatever the reasons might be. Um, so, yeah, that there, there was a bit uh, scary as well at the same time, I think. I, um, I but uh, there's one, one thing, sorry, um, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to agree with uh, Leo. Um, this one thing, I, I never thought about it like this, but now that, that you said it, um, I was personally really happy that we got a lot of press because from, from my point of view, it's really always good to get some. But then again, in this case, really the conversation went so much to, towards the gore stuff that um, I, I think, you know, the game story somehow deserves more than that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a bit, yeah, I, that's a bit the sad part of it all, I think. I, I never told you both this story at the time. Um, Leo, you mentioned, you know, right from the get go, when we were shown to people, we were very upfront about the, the content in the game and to take it within context. And you mentioned the first trailer showed 
the face scene. Um, and I don't know if you both remember, we were sat in a room talking about trailer two or three, I think it was. And I think, you know, at that point we were all, this isn't a game about shock and horror. And that was when we came up with the concept of that one trailer that was just Martha in the casket in that room with the music playing. And this is a very personal thing for me because, and, and this is a more shocking, horrifying thing. And like I said, the, the, the game will resonate in different ways with different people, but there is something very uncomfortable about being that close to normal death. That trailer wasn't a shock horror scene. It was a slow pan around a casket with a body in it. And the reason why that resonates with me is my, uh, my granddad passed away when I was very, very young. Right. And I remember, I remember my dad, you know, asking us as kids, um, rightly or wrongly, I don't know. Um, you know, did we want to go and see him for a viewing? Um, and then I think it was decided against that for us, but, and, and, I remember him saying, I think out of curiosity as a child, you know, very young, just saying, you know, what, what does he look like? And my dad saying the words, it's not your granddad. It's just, it's just a shell. And that, that image as a child up until, you know, my teens and beyond is something that always stuck with me. And that's why that trailer to me was quite a heavy thing to address because to me that is something horrific uh but also in a way something to overcome as well because it was like you know a tiny bit of personal Catharsis magic and... going into yeah. yeah yeah it can be i never shared that story with you both at the time <laughs> well thank you for sharing garen uh, anyone else yeah. in the room no very good it's it's it, it's 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 an interesting um thing to mention because you're right this is this is it i think often and this is the case with a lot of media um i think uh there's a very famous tv show called twin peaks that a lot of people spent a lot of time trying to figure out the meaning of and it's very famously said by david lynch you know it's funny funny you mention it because <laughs> yeah. i actually wanted to mention it like five times earlier <laughs> you know when it yeah. Also, when it came to the nice, wonderful, sunny environment you're in, and then the shit behind closed doors that's happening in the background and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is it. This and is also it. the disturbing part, you know, uh, which yeah. is in season three, I think, unheard of. Uh, what uh, David did there. Spoiler warnings for any future Twin Peaks watchers. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just that Twin Peaks season three is just yeah. excellent and it, very it, disturbing. It, it, it is. It <laughs> is disturbing. And I actually thought of Twin Peaks quite a bit with Martha in the sense that the belief is from David Lynch himself, it doesn't matter about Twin Peaks, you know, um, starts with a death of Laura Palmer and there's lots of twists and turns and it keeps people guessing. And David Lynch's whole thing is it doesn't matter who killed her or why. What matters is she's dead. And in a way, mm. that's what that trailer really does show. It, you know, it, a lot of things matter and, and, and there is a story to uncover there. But I think the real thing is, and it's the title, Martha is dead. And that's the key thing. So, so and, and it's the same, same with the other Lynch <laughs> stuff as well. You know, there is a dark undercurrent to life, but I think it's just as important to for that to exist to highlight the the beauty and the, the 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 mundane you see so i found that that that's the with martha you know i, I hope for everybody who who did see some of the more you know uh, sensationalist lines they 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 clicked on the steam page and then were intrigued just as much by the fact that they can hear uh true to true to the ways 40s uh italian music you know, and and hopefully they'll get just a, a, a little bit of the depth. So, so the the the, uh, the release and the statement was made about about this, and um, the, the game had to be delayed a bit. But after some some tribulation and 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 a lot of trials for you guys, the game is out there now, and that must feel very very cathartic. And now that it's out, well, um, I'm wondering you know what lessons 
you might take from Martha into the next project. You know, such is life, the town of light to Martha, Martha to the next. So what do you think the, 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 the things there that we're is, taking? There is one immediate thing that's just worth men mentioning is that is the, the tsunami of press, sensational press has now stopped. And what's coming through now um, are the YouTubers or the, the reviewers who mm. actually get in the game or get in the, the what it's all about. And the players, man. We can read so much feedback from the players, which I enjoy. And that's 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 actually that's actually um, you know what it's, it's the most satisfying part of this because yes you scrub away the hype and the noise and the unnecessariness of a distraction of what was caused by this unnecessary um, moment and now people the, the right people we didn't want everyone to play it everyone, everyone. right but the right people that are playing it are playing it and getting it and whether it's they're confused with you know, without giving any spoilers. But whatever the journey is, actually, let me just generalise. They're, they're actually getting and they're, and 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 actually, Aaron, um, you shared a YouTuber link. Um, oh, easy. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. man. He, Shouts he, up to um, man. Yeah. It was it was brilliant, and and every almost I think we had something like um, there was I think he had something like eight thousand likes and not one dislike. Mm. I mean, don't quote me. I think it was something like that. Um, yeah. And that's just I mean, I've never heard that before. I mean, it was. It was just not one person disliked the, the, his 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 review of the game and what he had to say about it. And in, in, in all the comments, I mean, to be honest, we could probably frame every single one of those comments yeah. because they, they they every single person in that thread um, got the game and understood it, understood the message, understood the power of what we were, the, the, what Luke was trying to achieve with this story. And the fact that it was discussing mental health and different aspects and yeah. the pacing and everything about the game. I mean, it was stunning. It was, it was a, I mean, there are other ones. I don't want to just focus on this, but yeah. this is, this is the most satisfying moment of, of this, the last few days, actually, is actually just being able to digest um, some of the more well thought through um, pieces that are being written. My favorite ones, I mean, this links back to uh, when we talked about what makes Martha a bit different from Town of Light, which is the, the sheer size of the game, and also that it, it's a bit more open. And, and Leo mentioned that, you know, Town of Light players, they went through it, they enjoyed it, and they never wanted to see it again. Mm -hmm. And now it's a little bit the same with Martha. But you can see, like, you know, people, uh, players are, um, I, I really can't wait to go back and and uh, see, you know, find more details about the story or see mm. if I <clears throat> interpret the story in the same way that I did yep. it the first time they played it. But they, are, you know, I don't want to speak for everybody, but if you look in the message boards, you read quite a bit of, I just couldn't do it yet, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I probably need a few months break or something, and and then I'm perhaps able to go back and play it again. I think one of the most gratifying gratifying thing with this with Martha is Dead in particular is I remember very very early on, um, not too long after Luca told us, this is what the story is, this is how it can be perceived in context and so on. Um, and I remember we had a conversation as a group after, and it was like, okay, the, the story in this game has so much uh, potential to be to be discussed for years and years. You know, YouTube videos, breaking down theories and so on. And, you know, even if you look at some of those videos that we mentioned that, tr that are starting to go into that and that, this, that, that massive Steam thread, um on, on steam as well where I've people are trying to comprehend yeah. the different bits and then people yeah. chime in saying oh yeah but did you see this photo frame and what was in there and all these little bits now being pieced together that people have had an experience and now it's mm -hmm. like a crowdfunding of yeah. how Internet to make detectives. the most sense of this do you know but, what i mean it's yeah. like how, finding more reason without sort of giving too much away i'm sure luca has planted and, and lots of C and links and cross references to things. Let's just leave it at that. And, yeah. and his attention to detail is multi layered. So um, people could be hunting for a while and, and still discovering. So that's cool. I, attention to detail, and I don't mean to derail, sorry, Jake. Um, speaking of attention to detail, I think 
this is a story that not a lot of people are going to know, but I, I think we need to talk about the um, the, the, the chapel restoration mm. and 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 the story and, and the story behind that as well. Mm -hmm. Because this not, there was uh, this. The, the 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 church that's in the game was is was bombed and in ruins, right? Um, in and real then, life, uh, sorry. In 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 real life, okay. yeah. In so um, the the locations exist. Um, and LKA, um, they worked with some people in particular to, to reconstruct and rebuild as it was, correct? Yeah, I'm going to say yeah, um, without actually 100% under <laughs> the answer. Yeah, no, they, I think so. He was in, they were involved. I mean, the, um, it's, the, it's the chapel in San Cashano. And um, yeah, it was, it was bombed heavily. There wasn't much left of it. It got rebuilt, though, as far as I yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. rebuilt. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure whether I'm not sure Luca's in what Luca's involvement was. Um, but I mean, it's yeah. I mean, it's, it, I mean, it's it's. I mean, the, the the thing is that 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 I mean, Tuscany. Not a lot of people know this because everyone thinks Tuscany is this wonderful sort of glory hotspot, you know, for right. Vino and all yeah. that Dolce Vita. But in, <laughs> after World War Two, it was a mess. I mean, literally, the Italian government could not give land away. You know, they, they were literally, oh man, I've got 10 acres. Do you want it for a couple of, you know, a couple of, you know, a couple of lira or whatever it is. They really couldn't give it away. They had to, they had to bring in. So there are lots of, lots of people from all over the country. So it was actually in ruins, which is a shame. I mean, it's a lot of countryside, but the big cities were all sort of knocked down and, and in, a, in a mess. So um, a lot of history there. And, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of fight in there, um, especially sort of the sort of back, back end of the, the sort of the allied advance um pushing forward so and and lots of sort of partisans kind of fighting i mean it's it's, it's, a, it's such a rich tapestry and i think it does have a dark history tuscany um just yeah. through what well, well actually, through. actually that's my takeaway from my first dead believe believe it or not so i'm a, like a, i'm a, just to touch on like some of the points from from earlier again and i can't stress this enough you know um i, I think whenever you're dealing with a, a dark subject matter it's easy for anybody to say is horror is bad you know you hear about it at the oscars that you know like there's like films that very recently would be considered a dark psychological horror that blurs the lines between reality superstition and focuses on grief and loss like hereditary but people who only know the bad bits about hereditary are like it's a horror but there's actually a lot you can learn from that and one so, of my favorites ever by the way yes absolutely fantastic and, and actually the reason yeah. i asked specifically about the horror inspiration is because a lot of the people who worked on it actually aren't inspired by horror the soundtrack which is a fantastic soundtrack using a clarinet which is not a very scary instrument um the the, the, the guy is not really into horror whatsoever so he drew from completely different inspirations like if he turned the gain up on a microphone in an empty attic what would the ghost sound like things like this and um th th i find that there's a that that the, the all great stories come from authenticity and authentic stories about places that you've never been to that are perhaps not completely in line with reality but at least steeped in enough that you can walk away from Martha is Dead not only with a fantastic story but uh, a bit of knowledge about Tuscany because I actually didn't because actually sad, sadly I fell right into that uh, the pigeonhole that Leo just mentioned about thinking Tuscany is some sort of like retreat for people who really like Instagram so to find out that, to find out that maybe you know 80 years ago or something like that it, you know it's it's uh, yeah I, I, I absolutely love that and, and if anything that's why people are uh, you know enjoy stories it's it's you know it's the safety of experiencing something um the escapism sure but you know experiencing a story uh the comfort of your own home but learning something is 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 always it so to me that was one of the, the big things about martha that i was really blown away with my uh lack of knowledge about italy and Tuscany in particular <laughs> i i think it it would be a nice one for uh, Luca um, one of the next times when he's going to join to talk about his inspirations. I know quite quite a bit because yeah. of course we've spent a lot of time talking, and um, ac across all media, you know what kind of movies he watches and I watch and all that stuff. But um, in in this case, it's also a very personal story, and um, I I don't know how how much. Uh, 
he's going to talk about that. But in general, it's really interesting to listen to Luca, especially when it comes to what he's inspired by. And it's definitely also horror movies, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's but the it's, thing. It's it... way more than that, as you already, like, you know, <laughs> su suggested in a way. Yeah. There, there is one thing that I do want to say for when Luca is on as well. Leo, I, I don't know if you remember this. This was three and a half years ago, I think, same time that we had that meeting with everyone at LKA. And we did an internal filming documentary talking to the devs right in front of where you're sat now, actually. That's right, yeah. That's um, right. And the last question I asked every single developer was, working on Martha is dead. How do any of you go home smiling? Because all of them are the most happiest, most wonderful, delightful people that I've ever met. Um, and I'm not going to give the answer, but every single answer from everyone was very beautiful. And I think we'll save that one for uh, when Luke is on because it's uh, it's beautiful. I think it, it would be fantastic to revisit this. And just like Leo mentioned, um, waiting for the noise to die down and really giving this time to ruminate. You know, the conversations will be happening for quite a while. The video essays will be coming in. So it would be really good to revisit this. But just as it's as contemporary as possible for those listening um, in the contemporary, not listening in the past, um, Martha's Dead released very recently, 24th of Feb. And if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about the thought process from Luca himself, actually, uh, the Martha Uncovered series is available on Wired Live on, on YouTube. Um, so thank you very much, everybody, for your time. Unless there's anything that you, anyone would like to end any imposing knowledge about uh, cows, Tuscany, or <laughs> then, then I'd like to say a big thanks to, to Leo mm. Kim and, and, and Aaron and I will be back next week with with more i'm sure all of you will be thrilled to know that we have been in touch with gloria gainer so <laughs> thoughts and prayers everybody uh, and let's hope yeah. we can smash it uh I yes yes thank you thank you everybody for listening or watching uh check us out on youtube where you can actually watch us if you're listening to this on a podcast service we actually do have a whole video element we're on YouTube, and while you're there, just chuck us a like as well, yeah? Or give us a nice review. Yeah, I do, <clears throat> yeah, I do, I do want to, can I just, from away, and you probably should have done it at the beginning. <laughs> can everyone sort of like and subscribe and register with YouTube? And the, I know you just said it, but I was going to write a layer for, for a time. Can we just sort of kind of, you know, make sure people do that? Next week, your host will be Leo Zillow. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. I'll send my glasses through the post, and then you can borrow the mic. And, yeah, no, no, yeah. 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 I was supposed to mention it at the beginning of the video. Um, hey, yeah. yeah, it's all good. Yeah, if you've made it, if you've made it this far, you're one of the good ones. So uh, just do us one <laughs> last done. solid and, and give us like. So thank you for joining yeah. us, Leo and Akim, Aaron, you and me. Next week, everyone else, thank you very thank much, you, guys. Jake. No, thank, thank you. you guys. Bye, bye. Thank bye. you. Take okay. care. Okay. Word unplugged.